everybody who is online, everybody who's listening to this, wants to create better content, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see people doing out there with their content? We wasted years trying to model after influencers like Gary Vee or Peng Joon or like the Russell Bransons of the, of the world, right? And we could not get our content out there consistently. People trying to outsource their thinking. It just bothers me so much when I see people going into like, yeah, I created 3,000 pieces of content with this chat GPT and all that. So I'm like, hey, it's a great tool. It definitely can help. But if you're telling telling it to create everything from scratch and you're not doing any of the thinking, like that's not the way to use it. Don't outsource your thinking. I should have liked that one a lot. You need to put that on a t-shirt. Hi guys, and welcome back to Content is Profit. In today's episode, we grabbed this section of an interview with Ina Kopni. You probably know her from the show. We've done a couple episodes with her and she flew all the way to from Boston to interview incredible people here in Jacksonville, Florida. And we're lucky enough to be part of her show on the second day. So she wrapped up the conversation with a question that was supposed to be a little short, but we extended for about 30 minutes with uh, our thoughts process. And she asked us, you know, what are some of the biggest mistakes that people are making today in content and really how do we solve them? So as you know, we've had eight years of experience creating content. In the last three years, we've done a lot of podcasts, not only ourselves, but we own the physical studio. So we see a lot of different scenarios and we go over these mistakes that we keep seeing over and over and how you as a creator and a business owner can solve them. So with that said, enjoy the episode. Now, um, I can't let you go without asking you, do you guys work in the content creation industry? Everybody who is online, everybody who's listening to this wants to create better content, is trying to figure out how to create abundant content. You guys live it every day. So I just have one question for you guys. It's going to like on top of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. What are some of the biggest mistakes that you see people doing out there with their content? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think we might have some different opinions too. I'm gonna put that disclaimer right on front, which is sometimes our opinions differ. Okay. What we do as a business, we know what we're doing, right? And we have our processes and how we help people on the content creation aspect sometimes and, you know, we or opinions might differ, which is cool, right? Because obviously, we'll take brings different, different b- b- brings mm-hmm. uh, different opinions and different points of views, different points of value too for the clients as well. So, I would like to hear your opinion first. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot lead with that and then that throw me like, under the bus. Right? You go. That's right, pretty much what you just said. He's like, he's like, whatever he's gonna say, I'm gonna vehemently I mean, I disagree I, with. No, so. no, no. I, I, we're now, living, now people are going to think, oh, this guy doesn't have anything. We're, bo- <laughs> we're both pretty, like, firm in our opinions. And I think, like, we both uh, have experienced a lot of things that make us think that way. And that I think that's pretty, that is, it's a testament on how flexible this space is, right? Mm-hmm. Because, right. you know, we've worked now with, like, over 100 clients, which is incredible, at different capacities, right? From all the way from coaching to, like, fully servicing content ecosystems, from, people that have been on the biggest stages in the United States as speakers or authors to very small entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. So my personal point of view, and then we can start riffing off of this, is people probably, I don't know if it's a bigger mistake because there's there's a lot of mistakes, but my, my point of view is like content is a constant hypothesis of like, what can we put out there to continue to attract? And again, we have to define what the goal of that content is. So to be very specific with our podcast, the goal of the podcast is to develop really high quality relationships of people that we really want to hang out with and learn from and maybe partner with in some projects, including being a client, for example, right? You were a guest on our show. We have not worked together, but it's totally okay. Now we are working together, right? Mm-hmm. And and uh, you became like a really good friend in the industry. So that's goal number one for our podcast. But people assume that, for example, the podcast is a way to reach new audiences and then that audience to then translate into into business, which it could be a really cool side effect of the main goal that we have. So I think number one is yeah. people. I just want to clarify. Some people do have that goal. Exactly. For their podcast. 
ours is not that one. That yeah. is kind of like a secondary goal. So, so I think like one of the things that we see often is the mislabeling of like content or what was it the goal people don't really know what they want to achieve with their content when we ask them right so uh with that said let's say once it's defined right we're big fans of creating your own process of content like we've spent we wasted years trying to model after influencers like gary v or peng june or like the russell bransons of the of the world right and we could not get our content out there consistently right so um once we decided on like okay this is what we're going to create how we're going to create it that unlocked consistency and frequency for example right and he started to put in we started putting the reps mm -hmm. right once you get that base and i think this is where w our opinions differ a little bit right is perfect like are we being consistent is our message being heard then you can start playing with the different levers uh on what type of content are we doing how are we crafting the hooks how are we, you know, as a short form versus long form? Are we doing multi-purposing? Are we doing focusing on YouTube? How do we, like YouTube alone is a, a massive undertaking on like how do we do the thing? But also deciding, am I going to be creating low friction content or am I going to have a massive team behind to produce like a super high quality content, right? Like what also, I'm very, I'm a big fan of like, what do you like? to create right for for us like for, or at least for me continuous profit version one was literally going on facebook live and have a really cool conversation and then that's it there was no editing on I'm the just back gonna end. say the good old days the good <laughs> old days those are some fun episodes of continuous Th profit. they're still really fun but they have evolved quite a bit yeah. right obviously we're now in a studio we have a multi-cam setup there's a producer in the back like which the essence is still there but it has changed a bit mm -hmm. uh but we never wouldn't it be able to get to episode 500 plus whatever pieces of content come out uh, without that? So I think like there's all these elements that we need to start experimenting with to get to. It's always going to change like growth, like the, the success thing, like we're, you know, and I think that's where Fonzie comes in. But like we need to structure this clip this way. Right. And uh, I'm very more like, let's just put it out there. Right. See what happens. And obviously he'll dive a little bit more into what he thinks. But that's the fun part. You can start experimenting. You know, Fonzie mentioned in one of the uh, our talks is like 80% of, you know, what you know it works. And what is what works? Well, mainly what works for you to put content out there. Because if you don't put content out there, nothing's going to happen. There's no feedback mm -hmm. that you can learn from. And then 20% testing. Mm -hmm. So visually, what would that example look like in our case? Like 80% will be the podcast and the clips from the podcast. Well, now what's the 20% that we're testing? Are we testing trends on vertical content because that's what's happening? Are we testing ads on the podcast? Are we testing, you know, uh, individual My brother clips? has been testing dancing videos, so we'll see how those perform. <laughs> Definitely not. Don't look for those. <laughs> not happening. He wishes. Uh, but again, you know, you create a very unique type of content. Like you've been creating content since you got to the studio, right? Um, I admire you because of it. I would never get in a camera with a song to do what you do, but it does and it works for you. And I saw it yesterday, you posted the video and there are people responding to you and engaging with you. And that's perfect. If I do that, probably they would laugh at me and they would not do that, right? Like, because it's probably not, it doesn't go with my personality or what I want to do. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. like, we feel very comfortable and we love the process of the podcast and the clipping. So. That's my point of view, and we can riff if we want. But yeah. I mean, definitely there's few overlaps in, you know, we, as a business, we have a foundation that we both believe in, right? Which the hypothesis, like content is a constant hypothesis. Like, is this going to work? Well, let's put it out and test it, right? And then if it works, cool, let's do more of that, right? We both believe on finding your own how. Right, which a lot of people get stuck on like, oh, but this person told me that I had to do it like this, but there's so much friction. I could not create this. Okay, cool. Well, maybe you are a better <laughs> writer than being on video. Why don't you just write? You know, like all this type of stuff that I think people need to do a little bit of, you know, introspect work and, and, and figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, where, well, another one of our foundations that we actually agreed on <laughs> because of all the friction that we have put on the first time that we try to create a podcast. Fun fact, before Content is Profit, we had started a podcast called Bruce and Bros. And um, <laughs> it was the two of us sitting in my room, 
uh, at the apartment that we were living in at the moment. We had a few DSLRs that, for those that know a little bit about cameras, DSLRs for the most of them have a 30 minute limit that you can record and then it's they, they shut down. Fancy. Yeah, 20 right. minutes. It, it depends on the <laughs> file. Whatever, we're not gonna get technical. 20 or 30 <laughs> minutes, you know, they they turn off once you, they stop recording once you hit that. So we had those cameras set up, multiple cameras set up. We would start recording. We were talking about marketing, you know, and after 20 minutes, while drinking I had, beer. while drinking beer, and after 20 minutes, I had to get up, restart the cameras, and then go back and recording. Well, we recorded five episodes. We didn't edit any of those because of the friction that we had put into that. Mm. So when we decided to restart our publishing journey, it was with 45 Live, the challenge that my brother mentioned. And one of the things, the rules, the foundations that we set in place was quality of the message over quality of the production, right? Don't get me wrong. I love a good production. I love, you know, a good set. I love great editing. But at the bottom of it is quality of the message over quality of the production. Like, I'm pretty sure everybody that is listening to this or watching to this right now, you can think of somebody that you've seen on a talking head video for 30 minutes to an hour and you've been engaged and love the whole thing and had zero production value mm -hmm. right and then on the opposite side i'm sure you have seen the most artistic production value out there and you didn't watch it at all right because the message wasn't good and vice versa right mm -hmm. obviously there's talking heads that are terrible and you don't watch and then super good produced vi videos that you absolutely love right so it doesn't that means like you don't need a very specific thing to do it, right? But the common thing on the content that actually works is quality of the message. Now, you said, what is, you know, the biggest problem, the biggest mistake that you see? And I'm talking on uh, expert-based businesses primarily is people trying to outsource their thinking. Mm -hmm. Like, it just bothers me so much when I see people going into like, yeah, I created 3,000 pieces of content with this chat GPT and all that. So I'm like, hey, it's a great tool. It definitely can help. But if you're tell, telling it to create everything from squat, a scratch and you're not doing any of the thinking, like, that's not the way to use it, right? Like, for me, again, I've mentioned a lot. Honesty is important. And if you're leading with some content that you are actually not creating to your customer, like, personally for me, that's a lack of honesty. Right, we had an episode. It was kind of a rant. We saw a clip of a guy that is like, "This is a you create content." It's like, grab this video from somebody else, run it through ChatGPT, steal their ideas. But I was like, "No!" I was like, "That's so dishonest, you know." Like, and also, if you're an expert, you should have your own frameworks, your own IP, right? The your own thought process, your own, you know, like you should be sharing your expertise and your experiences and your stories with your customers and leading with that so like that is my biggest thing now i do love clips i think a big challenge right now is that a lot of people don't have enough bandwidth and they try to compensate with multi-purposing whatever content it is that they're producing right and yeah let's blast it out out there i think a problem there is that you're not gary vaynerchuk unfortunately you know you're not uh alex or mostly like you're not these big people that as soon as people see their face they know who they are and they're going to stop on their tracks to see what they, you know, to hear what they have to say. Same with us. We, just so you know, we multipurpose a lot of content from our podcast, right? It's part of our strategy. But I'm not counting on it to go viral, right? For me, it's more of like, I just want to stay top of mind for the people that are already seen some of our content that already like know us, right? I think there is a lack of original ideas, original content out there that people you know actually put intentionality into creating them um and i think that's a big mistake i think that's part of the 20 percent that my brother is talking about right for us because of our bandwidth or capacity and our processes 80 percent of our content are those podcast clips but it's like do we have that 20 percent that is intentional right that is our own ideas um that we're sharing our own frameworks our own stories rather than having somebody else created it yeah, also, also understand. I get, I get very fired up about Mike this. Drop, yeah. way, <laughs> yeah. Mike drop, by the way. Mike drop. Um, I think it's also understanding like where's that content going? Like what what's the platform that we're publishing on? Like for example, like a lot of the traffic in our YouTube specifically, and again, like we publish our episodes on YouTube with 
zero expectation, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're like, it's going to be out there. It's going to serve one, two, t- you know, three, 10, 200 people. I don't care. It's going to be there. Uh, but then you start learning a lot from, from the stuff that you put out there. Be like, okay, um, reading at the data, like consumption data. Are people actually watching the whole thing? They're dropping a minute 10. Why? And you start learning about, you know, yourself and just keep a mind open, right? For the clips, they're never going to be perfect, right? Uh, but at the same time, the clips drive 90% of the traffic. And we've seen people transform from YouTube to the listener. And a YouTube consumer is very different than a podcast listener, right? So it also matters, right? So the way that I personally see it is like these data points that are just helping us kind of navigate this crazy thing in the vehicle that we enjoy creating, right? Um, so like to Fon- Fonzie's point, that's how we've been able to develop our own frameworks because we talk about them on the show. We talk about it on the content. We have to think about those things before we put them out to the world. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and is a, again, ever evolving content is a very good example. Is like this creator, Casey Neistat. Are you familiar with Casey? Mm-hmm. No. So he's, he's had documentaries on HBO and he, his YouTube channel is very unique. He had a phase where he was daily vlogging. But his vlogging was like really high quality shoots and he has really good equipment and his studio is like very unique. The studio itself is a character on its own, right? And he uses props. And he's like, what do I have in my hand to create? And he has a lot of tools and he draws and he puts camera in these weird angles and he's in New York. So he has a ton of stuff to work with, environment, right? And then he has his older brother. I don't know if you knew this, but his older brother is also a creator, but he's also a very good different career he's a storyteller and he is also he has a workshop and he's a dad and and his creation is very uh not catered to the algorithm like a modern creator could be but he's grabbing a ton of traction because it's very unique but one video takes him it's not a daily video it's maybe two videos a month because he's all laborious but that's what he enjoys doing right so people have to find that and then companies i think Finding their own voice, like who's the person if the if the company is running a podcast, who's the actual person that runs the podcast? Is it the CMO? Is it the CEO? Is it like who's there that is the voice? Is it outsourced talent? Why is it outsourced talent? Right? Are we doing user generated content? Does that align with our goals? Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's a, a an awesome case study of a chocolate um, company that they went mega viral, right? And they started selling a ton on TikTok and on Instagram. And uh, the guy has a company, he created the chocolate, but then he gave full creative freedom to his creators. So what he did is like, hey guys, um, here is the chocolate. You go do your thing, create hard, whatever piece of content you want to create. There's no limitations. You even create your own social handles. So it's not like a proof handle, it's not a verified handle. And you guys start putting content out there and you guys are all affiliates. And whoever was good at creating content and driving sales will get a lot of money. And that's how they get paid. And he had pretty good editors that he will keep on on payroll. But the vast majority was, am I good enough to create engaging content for that specific product so they sell? And then the ones that were not will weave themselves out because they were not selling so they will go find a different thing but that was a pretty bossy thing for that company to do to give full creative freedom how many companies out there will give full creative freedom to a creator to create whatever they think is going to work because they're connected to the industry to do that so i think that's part of the big problem people hired production companies or whatever to bring this vision to life or maybe to they hire the expertise of the feedback and they're like okay perfect you guys are the expert in the industry what can we do and then Ideas get pitched. This is the concept that we're going to go for. I'm like, no, I really want this to look and feel this way. But why Why were you hiring other people in the first place to run that play if you're going to overrule everything that you say? And we see it with, like, production decisions all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's like this dance between ideas, your thoughts, the, the production, who is in charge, who's not in charge. And I think that's why probably smaller creators and entrepreneurs and maybe the people that listen to this show – have a big advantage because you can pivot very quickly mm-hmm. and discover your medium, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, it's an experiment. A lot of people get too afraid of what uh, others are going to think about me, you know, and then they're afraid of putting their message. I'm afraid of what people are going to think world. about you. About me? Um, I'm, I'm, 100%. I'm scared of what people are going to think about your legs, bro. Dude, they are. <laughs> shit, look at this. Ah, some, some soccer years play, of soccer. It's soccer yeah. player legs. Yeah. Soccer player legs. Um, Sorry, I was just kidding. No, no, I, it's, it's a, I'll take it as a compliment. I appreciate it. 
But um, yeah, like people are afraid. I was very afraid at first. I would get sweaty pits. I would get super nervous. And like my armpits would start getting sweaty. And we have a joke about it. It's like, oh, Fonzie's getting sweaty pits and all that stuff, right? I was very self-conscious about my accent. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is the more you do it, right, then the more you realize that it really is not that way. So a big mistake, especially for people that are, might be starting or might be thinking about, all right, how do I publish? What do I publish? is that that might be holding them back a lot. And I know my brother mentioned about structure and things like that. There is definitely a technical aspect, right? A, a ta tactical. Right? Technical, technical. On the sense of like, how do I structure a clip, right? Like, how do I create hooks, right? Like, copywriting knowledge, all these things. Yes, but I would say, do not get hold on on that. Do not let, you know, your perception that you lack knowledge in certain skills stop you from putting the content out there, right? Because the best way of, about learning is doing the thing, right? So put the content out there and then you're going to have information. You're going to get feedback from the audience. And my brother mentioned on, oh, this is working. Let me create more of this. People are attracted to this hook. People are attracted to this topic, right? Oh, people are attracted when, you know, I actually don't start with a hook, but I actually start with the story, right? Etc. Like this structure is like, there's not like a set in stone rule or of how you should be creating these things. Mm -hmm. um, but the most important part is like, you cannot figure any of those out if you don't put your content out there yeah. and think for yourself. Think for yourself. <laughs> don't outsource your thinking. I should have liked that yeah. one a lot. You need to put that on a t-shirt. All right. Yeah. I'll do it. Content is profit. Do not outsource your thinking. I like outsource that. everything else. I like Just that. not your thinking. Yeah. Right? Outsource your production with us. Yeah, with <laughs> us. Content, content is profit.